Hi, today I'm going to show you an easy way to get your stamped images into Cricut Design Space. And not just in, but in at the correct size. You may remember before I taught you to do this with a scanner, and you can still use a scanner with this method. But if you don't have a scanner, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a phone. Now, the first thing we need to do is get a nice, crisp, stamped image onto white paper. Black ink, white paper. So I've done that here. I'm going to be focusing on our mermaid today. I believe this is a recollection stamp from Michaels. When you're going to use your phone as a scanner, it needs to be level because if it's not level, your image is distorted from the skew of the camera angle. So one way to take care of that is to get a scanner app for your phone, but I'm going to show you a low-tech solution today that I got from the Dollar Tree, and that is this vinyl basket. I took the vinyl off and got myself a frame. So the other thing you need is a one-inch circle. You're going to want to cut some of these for yourself with the Cricut out of white and black. And be sure you verify with a ruler that they're exactly one inch. So I'm going to stick this really close to my image. And now, when I lay my phone on top of the frame, it's going to level everything out for me. And I can just move this image around till it's nice and centered, or however I want it. I can zoom in. The more framing up I do at this stage, the less cropping I have to do later and then all I'm going to do is click the photo button and I've taken that picture. Now what if you wanted to do a shadow or an offset to your stamp or what if your stamp company doesn't allow scanning stamps? Well you may remember that I showed you how to handle this before by cutting out your stamped image with scissors, low tech, with an offset and then scanning it against a black background. So we're going to do the same thing here. Sometimes the uh, stamped images after you cut them out will be curled a little bit so I put a little glue on the back so that that lays down flat and we're going to use a white circle this time and the same process. Frame up our photo, get the zoom level how we want it, and then click Photo. So the next thing we need to do is get the photos off the phone and onto our computer. To do this, we're going to use email. So I click Camera, click my Send icon, select both photos that I just took, and click Mail. Then I'm going to type in my email address and a title. And then I'm going to click Send. And when I do that, it's going to come up with a dialog box that lets me choose a size. And this is specifically why I'm using email, because I want to be able to scale down this photo so that it's not too large but still has plenty of detail for what I need. So I'm going to click Medium. And as soon as I do that, it sends those two photos off to my inbox where they'll be waiting for me when I'm ready to process these into Cricut Design Space. Okay, so here we are back at our computer and just as promised the email from me to me is here. It has the two photos in it and I can click this button to download them all at once. They'll go by default to my downloads folder. So then we need to go to Design Space click Upload, click Upload Image, click Browse, and here you'll see the Mermaid Stamps folder at the top, and it has the two files in it. We're going to do the plain one first. Let me choose that. Now we're going to click Simple and click Continue with the Magic Wand tool selected, which is the default. We're going to click Outside of the mermaid and we're going to click these two inside pieces. And we're going to check the preview. I see one little place here I don't like. So I'm going to go in and get that with the eraser. I'm going to zoom in. I can just barely see it. I would take that out. Hit preview. That's got it. Everything else looks good, so we can click on Continue. So for what we're doing right now, we want to save as a cut image. So I'm going to click this panel on the right-hand side, 
and click Save. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that into my document. Okay, so now we have the image, but not the size. And you aren't going to believe how easy it is now to get the size we need. So the first thing we're going to do at this point is click the Contour button. Now in Contour, the things that are highlighted over here are hidden, and this part on the left is your preview. So we want to hide everything but the circle. So we're going to click the mermaid and these two little parts inside our arms. And then we're going to click the X to leave this. You could also click off of this. Usually X means cancel. It doesn't in this case. Click the X to continue. Now we just have the circle. Now remember that our circles were exactly one inch. We made sure of that when we took our picture. So all we need to do now is go up to the size box with the lock locked and put one into either the height or the width. So you'll see that the width is one, the height's very close to that, close enough for our purposes. So we're going to click contour again and now we're going to hide the circle and unhide the mermaid. So now you see here on the right that just the circle is in gray. And we're, again, we're going to click the X to go ahead. So now, because we used the exact size circle, we know that our mermaid is also the exact original size. I know, right? So let's go ahead and rotate her. This simple snap and size technique is great for stamping, for representing blanks for writing or engraving, or for making templates for key rings, light switch covers, or anything where you need a true size image or cut file. So let's go get her shadow. I'm going to go through the same steps to upload the image. Our stamp folder was already open because it was the last one that was used. We want the one on the black background this time. So we're going to choose that. Click Simple again. Click Continue. And instead of clicking on the white, this time we're going to click on the black. When we do that, you see there's a little bit of fuzz here. That was from where it lifted off the background just a little bit when we took the picture. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to Advanced Options and I'm going to reduce the colors to 2. Now I'm going to click again and that looks a lot better. You can look at the preview. That looks good. So we can continue. Again, we're going to click on the right to save as a cut image and click Save. And we're going to bring that one in. And we're going to do exactly the same process. Hide Contour. Hide the Mermaid. X out. Change the circle to 1. Click Contour again. Unhide the mermaid. Hide the circle. Click X. And there we go. Now one thing you notice here is that our offset version is facing the wrong direction. That's because we took a picture of the back side of the stamp. So all we need to do to correct that, select her, go to Flip, flip horizontal. And now she's facing the same direction. Now normally we'd be cutting these separately but I do want to just show you on screen that these match up and the way I'm going to do that is I'll change the color of the true size to red and I will bring her to the front and then overlay them they're at different angles because it was two separate photos so we will have to rotate one or the other just for display purposes to show that these are matching up. I don't want to spend too much on that but you can see that our black image from the black background photo is a nice offset to the original size image that was on the white paper. So after I got this video almost finished, I realized I should show you how to bring in a stamp for print then cut. 
there are several things to do differently for print than cut. One is I would take the photo without the circle. I could erase the circle on import, but it's just easier to take it without to begin with. We don't need it. It only is needed for true size and it's in the way for print than cut. Second, I would go to the edit section of my photo app and adjust the color, brightness, contrast, and so forth. You might not have noticed, but the photo we used sort of had a bluish gray cast to it. Didn't matter for what we were doing. We just needed the edge to get a true size. We didn't care about the color cast. But if you're using it for print and cut, you do care about that. Next, at the email step, you want to choose large instead of medium for the photo size because that will give you a better image for print than cut. So I've done all that off camera and I'm going to upload that to show you. The steps are very similar. I'm going to click on simple, click on continue, and then because this is a larger photo I want to zoom out so I can see everything and I'm going to click the background and I'm going to click the two insides just like we did before and then I'm going to click continue. Now instead of choosing this right hand side save as cut image I'm going to choose the left hand image save as print then cut image and click save going to bring her to the mat, click on her, click on insert images, and you'll see that she comes in quite large. So we just want to get her to a manageable size for the moment and rotate her. And we can use this as is, as a print and cut image. We can make it any size we want. But if we wanted an offset for her as well, we could use the one that we already have. I'm going to duplicate this so that the original, which we know is the correct size, stays the correct size and put that away for safekeeping. To demo this, I'll change this one to white and I will move it to the back and I'll have to resize it. but it should be the right angle from where the way we did it before and you can play with that up and down but that looks pretty close and so if I wanted to print and cut that I would select both of these things and I would click flatten and let me turn on a canvas to show you the white background so now we can use this as print and cut it will print the mermaid but it will cut the white the outside of the white outline. So this is very handy and again this can also be resized. At this point you can save your file or lay out the cuts you want and go ahead and print and cut or make some cutouts to stamp on with a stamp positioner or you can use the outlines with the hinge method or with snap map. So you've got a lot of flexibility here with what you can do with your stamped images and once this work is done you save the file and you don't have to do this every time. So I hope you've enjoyed learning an easy way to scan your stamps with your phone and to create true size cut files in Cricut Design Space. If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and stop by my Clever Someday blog for lots more innovative ideas. Thanks for watching.